Back in module one in lesson seven, you learned all about classes, why we use one, how to declare one, and even how to declare properties and methods inside the class. Now, one of the examples that we went through together was the spaceship class, and we also wrote cruise and thrust methods inside that class. Now, let me pose a question to you. What if we needed a slightly different spaceship, one that was round instead of a cylinder? Now, would you go ahead and create a brand new class and rewrite the cruise and thrust methods in that new class? Well, you could do that, but if you did it that way, you would be duplicating code and it, that would be hard to maintain. Now, if you think about a bigger app project, if that's the approach you're gonna take and you're gonna create new classes and duplicate code every time you need something slightly different, you're going to end up with a project that's really hard to maintain and not to mention the time wasted to rewrite code you've already written in other classes. So this is where subclassing can really, really help out. Let me show you how to use it. Subclassing is a feature in Swift that lets you create a new class based off of an existing class. So let's say we have our spaceship class here. If we were to create a new UFO class, we could define that UFO class as a subclass of the spaceship class. Now in this sort of relationship, the UFO class is known as the subclass and the spaceship class is known as the parent or the superclass. Later on, I'm going to show you how the code looks to define a subclass, but for now, I want you to understand this sort of relationship. Now the really cool thing about subclassing is something called inheritance. Check this out. So the spaceship class has the cruise method and the thrust method. Now because UFO is a subclass of spaceship, you don't have to redefine cruise and thrust inside the UFO class. When you create a UFO object from the UFO class, it still has the cruise and thrust methods because it inherits those methods from the spaceship class. Now, I wanna make one thing clear. There is no copying of these methods. There's no duplication of code. The original definition of cruise and thrust are in the spaceship class. It's just that when you declare the UFO as a subclass of spaceship, it automatically gets all of those methods and properties as well. Now, there are ways to provide unique implementations of those methods inside the UFO class, just in case the UFO cruises or thrusts a little differently than a spaceship. But even so, you can see how by subclassing, you can define a new class that builds off of an existing class. So you don't have to redeclare all of those functions and methods that exist in the parent class. All right, now we're gonna jump into Xcode and let me show you how this works. So right here, I've got a playground with our spaceship class. And just to give you a brief recap, we've got a fuel level property, we've got a cruise method and a thrust method. Both of those methods just print something out. So let me just demonstrate this very simply. Let's create a new spaceship object and assign it to the constant s. And then when I go s dot, you get to see what's available. We have cruise, we have fuel level and we have thrust just as expected. Now let's say that we needed to create our round spaceship class and let's call it UFO. So we could create a brand new UFO class and redeclare the fuel level, the cruise method and the thrust method. But why should we do that when we can use subclassing just like you learned earlier, right? So the way we would subclass from spaceship is we would first declare the class UFO and then after the class name, you use colon followed by what you want to subclass. So I'm going to put spaceship right there. And then it's just your curly brackets like that. And there you go. We've created a new UFO subclass of spaceship. So let's create a new instance of our UFO class. Let me just get rid of this line of code right here. And I'm going to say let u equals UFO and create a new object. Let's use dot notation and see what we have. Well, what do you know? We have cruise, fuel level, and thrust. But check this out. We didn't declare any of that stuff inside the UFO class. Because UFO is a subclass of spaceship, it automatically inherits the properties and the methods. And to do a demonstration, let's run that. And you can see that calling UFO cruise right, we'll actually execute the code in its parent class. 
So you might say, oh, Chris, that's pretty cool. You know, you can subclass Spaceship and inherit its properties and methods, and then you can build upon that, right, by writing more properties and methods in the UFO class. But now let me pose this question to you. What if the UFO wanted to do something a little different with its cruise and thrust methods, but it's already inherited these cruise and thrust methods from the spaceship? What can you do? Well, luckily there's something called override where you can provide a different implementation of an inherited method. So let me show you how this works. So let's say in the UFO class, you wanted to provide different code inside the cruise and thrust methods. Well, first you would use the keyword override and then you would redeclare that method. So you would call it cruise and in here you would provide your different implementation. So let's say this would be UFO cruise and let's just do it with the thrust method as well. Right, so now if we run this same piece of code, you're going to get UFO cruise printed out instead because now it's running this cruise method, right? We've overridden the one that it inherited from the spaceship, so it no longer calls this one. All right, so I know you might not be too easily impressed. So what if I pose another question to you? What if in the parent class, the cruise and thrust methods actually did something useful. For example, let's say in the cruise method, we actually decrement some fuel. So we take off five units of fuel uh, from cruising and we take off, let's say 20 units of fuel from the thrust method. Now in the spaceship overridden cruise and thrust methods, let's say you wanted to keep that code right there. You, didn't, you don't wanna duplicate it, right? And rewrite that down here. What if you didn't want to completely override a method and you simply wanted to extend the functionality of the original parent method? Well, I've got you covered with that too. So there is a way for you to override the cruise method and from within this overridden cruise method to call the parents version of the cruise method as well. And this is how you do it. You use the super keyword and super, remember I said that when you inherit or subclass the class, the UFO is known as the subclass and the spaceship is known as the superclass or the parent class. So that's why this keyword is called super. So if you use it, you're going to be able to reference that superclass. See? So this cruise method is actually this guy up here. So super.cruise. What is this doing here? Call the uh, call the cruise method of the superclass and then down here provide the extended functionality. So what you're essentially doing, right, is you're running the original code from the superclass and then you're providing extra functionality on top of that. So as you can see with subclassing and inheritance, you can actually build off of existing code and you don't have to redeclare and rewrite code over and over again. It helps keep things clean, maintainable, and more easy to debug in the long run. Now, just to prove to you that subclassing is used everywhere and that it is very, very useful, let's take a look at some of the classes inside UIKit because all of them build off of each other and they're all subclasses of one another. In this simple example, I just showed you one level of subclassing, but you can actually create a subclass from a class that is a subclass of another class that is a subclass of another class and so on and so forth. And you can keep extending that functionality and building on top of it. So if we just pull up the developer documentation here, uh, that's command shift and zero brings this guy up. And if we go into UI kit, let's take a look at inside views and controls. Uh, let's take a look at the image view or maybe the button. Let's do the button. So the button is a very common user interface element. And what I want you to notice is that right here, see, this is what you learned in this lesson, right? Class UI button, that's the class name, colon UI control. That means UI button is a subclass of UI control. Well, what is UI control? Let's click it to find out. 
UI control is a base class for controls, which are visual elements that convey a specific action or intention in response to user interactions. So to me, this tells me that uh, the UI control class uh, is something that you can put into uh, the view that the user can interact with and respond to. Here are some examples of classes that are subclasses of UI control. So sure enough, if I, let's say that's a UI switch right there. So let's go into the UI switch class. Sure enough, it is a subclass of UI control. So you can see all of these user interface elements that can be interacted with, they are subclasses of UI control. Now let's go back to the button, right? Click UI control. Notice something here. The UI control class is a subclass of UI view. So what's that? Let's click into it. Well, it's an object that manages the content for a rectangular area on the screen. In other words, it's something that can be displayed on the screen. So this class gives the, all of that functionality that lets you put that view onto the view. <laughs> and this UI view class is a subclass of UI responder. So now we're getting deeper and deeper, right? Let's click UI responder. It's an abstract interface for responding to and handling events. So this provides that functionality that allows the, uh, that user interface element to communicate and respond to and throw up events that our view controller can handle. Now, if you notice UI responder itself is also a subclass of another class called NS object. So let's continue drilling down and we've come to the end. You'll notice that the NS object is a base class. It's not a subclass of anything else. Now let's take a look at what it is. A root class of most Objective C class hierarchies from which subclasses inherit a basic interface to the runtime system and the ability to behave as Objective C objects. Now you can ignore the Objective C part of this because Swift objects run off of this NS object as well. But just to summarize, it provides the inner workings of what makes an object an object. And you can think of it as it provides the ability for your class to create an instance of itself as an object. So as you can see, UIKit is built up of a ton of subclasses extending the functionalities of each other. And this allows us to have a library of code like this without having a ton of duplicated code. All right, so in this lesson, you learned about subclasses and how inheritance works. You learned that most of the classes in UIKit are subclasses of other classes also inside UIKit. You learned the syntax for declaring a subclass, and you also learned about the override keyword, which can be used to provide a different implementation for a method that exists in the parent. Now, there are two key takeaways that I want you to get from this lesson. Number one is if you're working with a class inside UIKit, and you're looking for information specifically about a method or property of that class and you're trying to find it on the documentation page but you can't seem to find it. Chances are that method or property is an inherited one from its superclass or maybe one of the superclasses in that chain of subclasses. So just bear that in mind. Number two is when you're creating a new class and you're considering making it a subclass of something else, you can either subclass one of your existing ones or you can even subclass something from UIKit. Yes, you can do that. So let's say you wanted to create a slightly different button, maybe one with uh, rounded corners or a different color or something like that by default. You can create a subclass of the UI button class from UIKit and then just customize those properties to make it rounded or colored out of the box. And that's your own custom button. All right, so that's it for this lesson. I highly recommend that you work on the exercises and the worksheets. I'll see you in the next one.